Hi and welcome to this week's Free Drop. I'm going to talk uh, a number of things tonight, uh, particularly picking up on rising stars on the European Tour, Matsuyama's rise and rise on the PGA Tour, Tiger Woods's uh, rather disastrous start to the Dubai Desert Classic, and I'm going to talk about um, some videos that I've watched on the, uh, on the web, uh, particularly from my point of view, uh, struggling around the greens with the short game. First up, I want to talk about uh, Wan Hong Wang, the uh, rising Asian star on the European Tour. Last week's Qatar Masters, absolutely stunning play. Uh, for such a young player, uh, his short game and his putting, absolutely fantastic. I really do think that this lad's going to not only win and win and win on the European Tour, but not maybe this year or next year, but definitely uh, is going to be a major contender in future majors. What I really like about him is his temperament. Um, plays, nerveless golf, uh, very, very calm under pressure. Um, hilarious at the end of the uh, uh, championship when he was interviewed by Wayne Riley on Sky and answered the first question uh, in South Korean. Um, guy speaks absolutely perfect English through Riley for a few moments, but it also proves that he's got a great sense of humour, sort of the uh, Asian version of uh, Henrik Stenson, really. But I think we're very fortunate at the moment with the number of young players coming through. Uh, gives us fantastic quality on the European Tour. Uh, particularly looking forward to the sort of um, Rolex series later in the year, starting with the PGA. Um, really gives good quality, high value on the European Tour. Draws attention away from the PGA Tour, and just shows that uh, you know the combination of uh, Asian players, South African players, European players. Uh, really does mean that. Uh, you know, we can put real quality golf on, a uh, real sort of challenge to the PGA Tour, which I think probably the PGA Tour are going to have to respond to. Talking of Asian stars, Matsuyama's rise on the PGA Tour, absolutely phenomenal once again. Um, we've got the Phoenix Open uh, just started today. He's already blasted round in a 65, 6 under, picking up exactly where he left off really earlier in the year. Again, nerveless golf, plays with... A calmness, smile on his face, which means that uh, you know never appears to be under pressure and can play nearly any shot, uh, you know, at will really. And again, short game to die for, putting to die for, and the sort of you know the quality coming off the Asian um, continent in terms of golfers going forward. You can see a point where you know not just uh, you know golf domination, but uh, you know absolute powerhouse of. Fantastic players, and again, we're very lucky to be able to sort of watch these guys play. Um, that you know, very inspirational, you know, promote sort of golf to a, a younger generation, which is obviously vital to the future of the game. So all in all, you know, with Wang and Matsuyama, you know, you can really start to see now that the growth of the game, um, flying in the face, of course, of the Chinese government sort of crack down on allegedly illegal golf course development in China. Um, you know, there's a real sort of uh, conveyor belt of uh, talent coming out of there, which, uh, you know, uh, bodes well for the future, puts pressure on the American and European players to keep pace. So there's a lot to look forward to there. Talking of things to look forward to, I should imagine that Tiger was hoping to look forward to the Dubai Desert Classic. Um, news was that he was striking the ball very well on the range. Um, he looked in good shape. People were saying physically he looked great. Um, got up very early this morning, watched him tee off, and I have to say from the very start, uh, there was something quite wrong. You know, it was um, though he claimed later that there, he was pl paying, uh, playing pain free. Um, it didn't look like that, particularly in the early parts of the round. Uh, he wasn't walking well, um, certainly wasn't um, striking the ball well, and uh, though he had chances, um, he limped to a very lame um, 77 5 over, which. Um, you know, when you look at his previous attempts on that golf course in that championship, um, you know, it's, his, it's by far his worst round. And though, you know, they had the best of the conditions as well uh, this morning, um, you know, it's almost going to be impossible now, I would suggest, with the weather forecast for tomorrow in Dubai, high winds. Um, it's going to be practically impossible, I think, for Tiger to, to perhaps get to the sort of cut line, which might be sort of, you know, plus one level par, probably, when you look at the weather conditions. Um, he was missing reasonably straightforward putts. Um, his short game was was off, um, you know. But it was just the way that he was carrying himself, and um, you know, I'm not suggesting by any stretch of the imagination that he's he's, he's sort of hiding um, his physical well-being. But uh, 
you know, he's clearly not uh, match fit. He's not tournament fit. And I do feel for the guy, really, because what he really needs is competitive rounds. And until he gets a number of those competitive rounds under his belt, then, you know, we're not going to see whether or not he can or he can, cannot get back to the sort of standard where he can win tournaments. You know, personally, I'm going to stick to what I said last week. I do think he's capable of winning, um, you know, but he's going to have to, you know, put some miles on the clock, uh, sort his game out. And it is really just that thing. The guy plays in a goldfish bowl. Every single part of his game was been uber analysed today. Everybody had an opinion. Uh, it's going to be difficult for him. And I'm sure he sat there tonight in the hotel thinking, you know, where did that come from? I don't think anybody really expected a 77. Um, but the whole game was out and... Uh, you know, there isn't. There is clearly something not quite right with him. So whether or not he's, he's physically struggling, uh, physical and mentally struggling, or it's just that he's got to put those miles on the clock, it's really hard to tell. Myself, I struggle around the greens, uh, not massively, but um, you know, when you've sort of got that sort of little eight or nine foot sort of chip onto the green and, and run out to the flag, um, very often find myself um, blading the ball. Um, not quite getting the bounce right with the uh, with the wedge, so I sort of had a look around the internet and I came across uh, you know really excellent video which I think you know I'd certainly say to everybody if if that's part of the game that you want to really improve, uh, it's a video by uh, Me My Golf, um, and it's uh, featuring uh, Stan Utley, the PGA Tour coach coaches a lot of the top players, and uh, Stan takes you through a series of you know pretty forward sort of straightforward routines really, but also he sort of explains in great detail what it is that leads to that sort of blading and chunking of the ball and uh, you know I could see a lot of the faults that uh, you know in my game that I actually hadn't thought about and uh, you know hopefully by sort of, sort of taking forward some of the sort of practice routines and thinking those things through um, you know that'll improve things because I was sort of you know maybe one out of four shots I'm, I'm, I'm getting really badly wrong and I understand why that is now because Stan's explanation of my you know, my faults, uh, they're as clear as day to me. So I'd say it's a video that I would strongly recommend. Go to Me My Golf, look for the video with Stan Utley, and, uh, you know, I think you'll find it really, really useful. Just want to sort of sort of close, really, by just sort of generally reflecting on, uh, you know, where I think we're at over the last sort of seven to ten days in golf. I think the Qatar Masters, excellent, um, you know, particularly as the final round was played in, you know, quite difficult conditions with the wind. Um, the Phoenix Open, famous 16th there. Um, I'm not sure, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I guess it's a spectacle. I mean, it's a competition that last year over 600,000 fans turned up and watched the four days. Um, they seem to encourage uh, quite sort of bawdy behaviour, have a few beers, enjoy yourself. The players don't seem to mind it. Um, but that 16th is something, you know, the only enclosed hole in golf, par three. Um, it must be quite strange for the players, really, that they're sort of, you know, teeing off and, and playing that 170 yards and if they manage to miss the green or the ball rolls off the green the the booing and the uh, you know sort of behaviour of the crowd is quite sort of surreal really and you do wonder whether or not it's that type of thing that sort of then spills over into the Ryder Cup scenarios that are played in the US where the fans find it difficult maybe to differentiate between you know the fun time element of the Phoenix and the sort of uh, high drama of the Ryder Cup you know I'm not opposed to it but I do think it's a bit of a sideshow, and I think it detracts a little bit from, you know, what what maybe you know tournament golf's about. But you know, it's good fun, and if everybody sort of stays safe and it doesn't go too far, I guess it's okay. Just sort of closing on the Dubai Desert Classic. Great to see Sergio, you know, play so well this morning. Um, shame he dropped one shot right at the end, but phenomenal golf really. Seems to have changed his his putting grip. Um, you know, perhaps been a weakness in his game previously, but. You know, it's good to see that, you know, he's, he's confident and, uh, you know, he's still capable at, uh, you know, to pull off that. I don't know whether or not he'll ever achieve the uh, elusive uh, major he's after, but I mean, you know, very competitive. But just sort of closing on the Dubai Desert Classic, I think it's worth just sort of mentioning Ian Poulter, really. He had a very desperate year last year with, you know, injury and uh, I think struggled at the very start of that recovery with his golf. But uh, again, played a fantastic round of golf today. Look completely in control, seem to be enjoying it, which again, you know, isn't always the case with, with, uh, with Polter. But I think it's fantastic for, you know, again, the European tour, the stalwart of the tour, um, seems to have found some form. So I'm hoping he can sort of keep that up over the three days. Uh, looks like it's going to be very difficult conditions, um, certainly tomorrow in the Dubai Desert Classic. Um, but you know, what a what a tournament that is, what a golf course it is. You know, it's an iconic 
clubhouse there. Um, so fingers crossed, should be a great championship. Anyway, that's going to close there. Um, thanks for watching. Again, you know, if you like it, you know, give us a mention or uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter, and we'll be back next week with some more thoughts and views uh, from the world of golf. See you later.